Yeah, we're back. It's part three. We just saw great. No, you know what? I'm not going to talk about part two right now. I'm going to talk about part one. Part one, we established what is the Zerg norm? Why does it make the Zerg look so defensive? Because of that annoying contain. And then Zergs are constantly so freaked out about the bio mine harass that they are prepared to defend it at all costs. But we see life in part two. We analyze the build, looked at its ins and outs, have the exact timings of when, when, when which stuff went down where and why. And it all culminated in this moment. The attack that strikes right before Jokji has any ability to do anything about it. What a gorgeous timing attack. So great. We're going to pull to 1140 right as the timing attack is just beginning. And we are going to abandon looking at it. First of all, note that this is still quite early in the game. 1-1 one, one is only just finished. 2-2 two, two is on the way. These Zerglings actually think get misrallied and life doesn't even burn them. Is that not hilarious? This attack is like on the verge of killing... Jokji and life just forgot about a bunch of Zerglings. He is mortal. This is how good this build is. Then he's like, oh shit, nice, yeah, sweet. So in the midst of all this, we're actually seeing the money for life trickle up. There's two reasons the money is continuing to trickle up. For one, we didn't take these geysers. It's very easy to just hold the E button, and if you have too much gas, it also burns all your minerals. So by not taking this extra gas, we're preventing ourselves from overbuilding Banelings. Really nice. And also because Ling's a cheap. Ling's all a cheap unit. As life just starts to identify, all right, cool, that's going in. Around 1230, he just takes a fourth base. Concurrent with that, he takes a single geyser. More Ling's rolling on in. Here in comes one of my favorite parts. By the way, Ling's still being made like bajillions at a time. I mean, just look at the power of having all these hatches. <laughs> cool. Oh, we got 40 Ling's being produced at once. Oh, excellent. Oh. Worker count is it? Uh, actually, doesn't kill that many. Anyways. Big drop in the main base. This attack will eventually peter out. But we can see that that timing attack was actually like a timing very, very long attack. It's been two minutes since the attack began. But normally, right around 13 and a half or so. Well, actually, typically you can just kill your opponent. That's what's normal. <laughs> if you don't kill him, you can continue to flood and to gain the edge. But after 13 minutes, you should begin considering building a spire. Life builds a whole bunch of drones, which I don't want you to read into too much because he's getting a spawning pool. Not um, game over at this point, but certainly game in good condition. Ah, ah. Spire goes down. I think I honestly am of the opinion the spire should go down a little after 13 minutes. But still, we will come back to this gas timing uh, over here. I'll actually just show you this geyser. All right. We're at 12 minutes. The attack has just begun. There's the geyser getting built right around the same time as, as, as this expansion. But uh, nothing's getting mined out of it. Nothing's getting mined out of it. We're still on four gas. Nothing, 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 uh, nothing. You know what seems good? I think a spire seems good. You know what, let's, let's get a Spire, and since we're getting a Spire, I may as well mine gas. So there we go. <laughs> this is not an error. This is the statement, when you start your Spire, that's when you add on gas. However, because we have this base up, you can actually explode up to eight geysers fairly swiftly. So the Zergling aggression on all fronts finally peters out. But we just took geysers, four and five. We can swiftly thereafter take geysers 5 and 6. Or excuse me, uh, took geysers 5 and 6. We can swiftly thereafter take geysers 7 and 8. But you don't have to. You can continue to flood Zerglings off all this ridiculous number of hatcheries. Like, all the defense we'll ever need is with these Zerglings. 
And suddenly this gives us a lot of momentum. For one, Jokji has only just now gathered his forces together to do this annoying biomine pressure style. And we too, the Zerg player. We need to figure out a way to defend, but we're no longer doing like... You know, three bases trying to stay alive and get a fourth. We have four bases. We have more Zerglings than we even really know what to do with. And it's so hard for Terran to deal with this because... Look at the creep spread. All this creep was spreading during the midst of all that attack. During the midst of that early timing push. Look at how nice this late game looks. Yeah, it's the same Biomine pushing. But Jokchi can't afford to throw down a bunch of scans. Jokchi has to spend all his extra uh, resources on mules. So we can't, like, scan to pick stuff off. So suddenly our Zergling Mutalisk army is way, way stronger. I actually think I, uh... I'm gonna show this one more time. I don't think I emphasize it enough. <laughs> However, this part will just show you. Look at how little we are staying on the defensive. Oh, it's a drop, but good game. Cool. Didn't even use these geysers the whole game. Coming back to 12. Remember when this huge push came in? Of course you do. It's like the whole point of the daily. Watch the creep spread. Creep spread moving up. Nope. Creep spread. It's moving up. While we're doing this stupidly long attack that just lasts forever. Spreading that creep. Spread it on up, a doo wop. All right. Spread the creep, a doo doo wop. Whoop. Life getting a little sloppy. No worries. Completely unhindered creep spread. <laughs> Look at those little red blips on the mini map. Do 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 do. Creep spread. Come on, life. Come on, man. You're making me look bad. There you go. Look at a little. Oops. A little creep spread over here. That's good. That's good. A little some creep tumors over here. You'll probably spread those in mid. No big deal. Let's move the creep spread out. Ah. Wow, that was nice. We actually probably could be like to here with the creep spread if we had a little more focus. But one of the biggest benefits, one of the biggest pieces of ground gained by life's constant attacking starting just before this timing push is that when it does move out, our creep is way the hell more spread. Which makes defending these drops way the hell easier. For instance, right now we can clearly see that there is no medevac drop on this right side. We have complete and total lockdown on that. Yes. Yes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this daily up with some bonus. And of course, as you all know, the plural of bonus is boni. We're going to look at this second match between Life and Jokji. Do 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 wop wop a dee do. So we're gonna see life do a very similar build, and remember that timing that we looked at earlier. Remember that timing of the player who went for command center barracks. What was it? Around four minutes is when all this jazz finished at the front, the command center, and the barracks. And around five minutes, he only had one depot. I wonder if we can use that to our advantage. In fact, let me come back and show you show you desert moves. So this game, life actually does go for gas on 17. He actually does go for a pool on 16. However, life also sent out an early drone scout. Rather than do that in an incidental order, I'll just show you when he moves the drone out. All right, cool. The drone that does the extractor trick gets sent out to scout. Checking for proxy. Checking for proxy. Many Zergs send home there. But of course, Life wants to know if he can do any sort of useful timing. And he sees no orbital command. Seeing this, the depot here could also mean that he's going for proxy barracks. But seeing no orbital command means no proxy barracks. And hey, it's a command center. Continues to work his way in. Great droning up. What time did this stuff finish up? Around four. In around five minutes, Terran still only had one depot, continuing to do the ring around the rosy action. Knows that it's going to be a a uh, factory play. Everything else is pretty terrible in this matchup. You don't get to spread any creep. 
And actually, if your opponent just goes for straight Marines, you can just kill him with a Ling Bane Ling all in pretty much 100% of the time. Because he won't have any. Um, he won't have Stim and Combat Shield. So, hey, our pool just finished. So we get two Queens. But look at life! Building Zerglings immediately. We saw life do that in the last game. Hey, what do you know? You know, I remember a timing the day nine said, because I talk about myself in third person. In five minutes, only one depot up. Look at this hilarious timing. Whoop. Oh. Oh. Whoop. <laughs> and nothing but Zerglings being built on the backside. Because these Zerglings just get to wall straight into the main. These Zerglings will pretty much always be able to get straight into the main. Because he just won't have enough time to build a depot. For further comparison, note that at 6 minutes he actually begins to build Hellions. Which is, at 6 minutes, that's the time that he can build any more than 2 Marines. Up to six minutes, he has exactly two marines for defense. A wapity doo, doppy boppity doo. Massive speed zerglings, they'll overwhelm you. Doo 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 This is awesome. And GG. Alright, because the plural of bonus is Boni, and I said I was totally going to give you a Boni, we're going to go ahead and check out another one. It's going to be Rodo vs. Dream on Newkirk Precinct. Here's something that you can't always do. Um, but on a map like this one, where your Overlord will get into the useful position early enough, we're going to see another cool timing from Roro. What do Terran players do other than go for Command Center first? Well, they can go Reaper first. Let's keep a number in our head. Around four minutes is when the Terran player will finish the barracks and finish the Command Center. Around four minutes. This is a ten pool. Finishing at two minutes. So here are six Zerglings. I think eight is the right number to make. And then to go into droning. So great. At this point in time, Roro would have seen the wall off with the command center. And he would know that it won't be done until four minutes. But because he sees this, it's very likely to be a Reaper. And if you're going Reaper, it's very likely to be an Expand. So he chills. He just waits here. Waits for the Reaper to show up at his base. And then he's gonna get beaten in his face. And he waits a little bit to make sure it's out of the way. And there's the poor Reaper trying to micro. Oh no! Ah, uh, my micro! And cancelled. Oh, this isn't looking good for Terran. Bum ba do 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 do. Uh, yeah. So, Roro is going to be in a slightly different position than what we saw earlier, but I just want to get your creative juices flowing because we just saw two really nice timing pushes to kill a Terran player early on. But the nicest timing push of all is the one we saw in Part 2 where life overran his opponent with five hatches of Ling Bane Ling. And it was good. Subscribers off. Ready for questions. So let's go ahead and recap what we did in this daily. In part one, we saw the standard Zerg play, defensive-oriented, all about getting the Mutalisks fast, and upon doing that style, we saw how Roro was playing on the back foot all game long. And then we looked in part two, we talked about all the intricate and detailed timings of life's build, and then we stole it and talked about why that 12-minute push is going to be so excellent. Um, 
the timing of how to do it, how it worked. Um, and then we sort of closed out by showing how he transitioned in part three, and then some bonus early pushes. Anton Bischoff Frederick asked a simple and excellent question. Day 9, wouldn't good Widow Mine shots crush the style? Mm, if they're good enough, but if the mines miss at all, you die immediately. Immediately. And it's pretty damn hard to prevent him from hitting immediately. That's one of the reasons why we don't want to attack into a narrow choke. We kind of want to get in between him. <laughs> Spread out. So this... This build would work great on Belcher Vestige. It would work great on um, the fuck is that? Derelict Watcher. It would work great on... Um, I can't believe I'm forgetting my map names. Newkirk Precinct. Those are some examples of good maps. Bad map would be like Akalon Wastes, where um, it's really easy for Terran to just like hole himself up. Hell, build like two um, tanks and just cover everything. Uh, Subflow asks, what happens if you spam Zerglings like Life did, but Terran is playing defense and the attack fails horribly? Um, that Terran player was playing defense. That's the best part at all. That's what, it, that's what it looks like when you go up to a defensive player and crush his face in. Um, the only thing that might be a little bit different is if he makes a lot of tanks. Not like one tank, but many, many tanks. So, as a result... Um, if he is building a lot of tanks, when you see him doing that, you just instantly take a fourth, instantly go up to eight gas, and instantly get a spire. And then he's going marine tank, um, slow style, versus mass zerglings. You've already spread creep across the map. You have two two upgrades, and your mutilists are hyper aggressive and will be able to deal all sorts of damage. Monk E says, Day 9, in part 2, Life had his overlords all over the place around the mid-map. How could Life protect them with only a few links if Terran attacked them with his marines with the Hellions to support? Um, ew, it's so easy to just rush up and kill them off. Like, just trust me on this. You can even bring six marines, and you will have just sacrificed the life of six marines. Six, actually, very important marines. <laughs> actually, there's a lot of reasons why it's horrible, and we'll go through them one at a time. Horrible reason number one. You have one barracks with a tech lab for a long time going biomine. So if you lose, for instance, six marines, that's three minutes of production time of that barracks out the window. That means you have zero marines in the bunker for your natural and zero marines in the bunker at your third. So if I can kill off those six marines as zerg, I know that I can immediately send ten zerglings to your third and ten zerglings to your natural and you can't defend both. You just get totally boned. Um, the more immediate question is, can you even kill off those six marines? Totally, man. If I just build 25 zerglings, I will rush to surround your hellions. And if I surround the hellions, then great. I killed all your hellions. Now I have a huge lead. If not, you retreat, and then I just surround your marines, which can't kite at all, and just kill those off. Um, it's like, it's horrible as Terran to try to do that. Uh, Wraith Dagger says, one does simply not build an odd number of Zerglings. It's true. Zerglings are the exact opposite of packing socks. Threxor asks, totally legit question. Is this only good against early expanding Terran? Or maybe I could do it versus another build as well? It works fine versus other builds. You'll just have to begin uh, getting your Spire earlier and that sort of jazz. Uh, you'll still be able to hold off those early pushes with mass numbers of Zerglings and those five Queens. Imagine that he did a Marine with Stim, Hellion, Medivac timing push. You have five Queens to pick off the Medivacs. You have five Hatches to pump out the Zerglings, so you should be fine. America Pew Pew says, Day 9, how can Terran stop this push? I have no idea. I, I totally am, like, almost always I have, like, really good theories because it seems I mean, intuitive a lot of timing from how much time I spend studying StarCraft. But I just, I don't know. I've... Who knows? Um, whatever the answer is, it's not like, well, let me get tanks. It's it's going to be something about, like, positioning and building placement and, like, you know, do I build my barracks 4 and 5 and then begin Widow Mine production? Or do I begin Widow Mine production and then build barracks 4 and 5? I don't know. It's, it's hard. 
really hard. Let's take last question. Apocalypse 14 asks a great one. Day 9, why not transition into Ultralisks? Eventually, yes. That is a great unit to transition into. Um, but units are not good just because they're good, you know, on like the big broad scale of things. They, they serve a purpose. So the purpose of the Ultralisk is to really crush in those extremely large packs of units. After Zerg is completely defended on all fronts and Terran can't break through anymore, Terran's going to wind up with a big block army and just push with that. And Ling, Baneling, Mutalisk does not do well against that. You just keep retreating back over the enormous number of mines. But Ultralisks are very nice in that situation. Um, so if you attack to Ultralisk too quickly then suddenly you have four bases and not enough mutalisks and, he, and suddenly his drops are really, really, really strong. So in the mid game, even though we're at like the 16, 17 minute mark and we have four bases, we have a low econ Terran who's gonna be doing a lot of aggressive dropping action everywhere. So we really do want mutiling for a good amount of time to shut those down. And then after we shut those down, then totally go for ultras. That's it. the daily. Ain't funny says how do investors fit into this time? Just the usual like when you uh, begin teching to hive. Get them. Now we're going to write things down. I'm going to do some calligraphy. Who has the most beautiful alias in chat that will get written down? All right, first one. First one, Twist Nas. What was the name, Twist? Twist Nas, Twist Nas, Twist Nas. All right, let's try to do a Twist Nas. So let me let me let me just let me just get some let me get some practice paper here. Twist Nas. Twist in us. How are we gonna do this one? Well, T is easy. T is we're just gonna do we're gonna do a big swoopy thing. Um I don't like this at all. That's bad. We're gonna, we're gonna try it again. Problem is, there's like not a lot of letters that like have things that come from underneath it. Like, okay, I'm not making any sense here. Let's. Ah, twisting ass. It's no, it's not. It's not amazing. It's okay. I think the T needs to be a little bit shorter. If I can do something like that. All right, twisting us. Your name's really fucking hard, man. All right, uh, uh, Lady Lefice, of course. How could we not? How could we not? See, this is these are the problems that I came up with in in seventh grade. I would just try to write words down, and I try to see how they would look. They got all scripty. A lot of words that are just like hard to do. So, Lady Lefice, practice. Oh, fuck yeah, Lady Lefice, we got this shit. Like, like, there's just, there's just so much more opportunity to meet things. Let's, let's tighten this up. Let's tighten this up. Let's tighten this up. 
I shouldn't make that E that long. Okay, we're, we're turning it upside down. And then it's th it's the final E that's going to make it. Yeah, you can just do like a big fucking swoopy E. Yeah. Lady LaFice. You got the dot above the F. Mmm, that's the shit. Yeah. Nuked Panda, of course. Of course. Of course! Alright, how, how, how do we want to begin a Nuked Panda? Nuked panda. Let's see if we can see if we can nail a nuked panda. And then I'm just gonna sign off. Shit. Fuck. Keep trying to do the swoop. You'll hear me do it. There it is. Is there a, a more sweet way to do an N? I don't know, cause like, okay, so here's here's how I normally do an N. I normally do like a big, like big swoopy things like that. But I'm like, is there another way to do an N that's like, maybe something like that? Does that work? Does that work? Well, that's kind of neat. You know what, let's... Oh, Pat Phoenix. Of course, of course. Let me do, let me do Nuke the Panda real fast. Let's get, let's get some love to the Panda. I just have like a lot of printer paper over here. Okay. No, it looks better with the fucking swoopy end, so let's do it. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Fucking nuked panda! Woohoo! Alright, let's do let's let's close it out strong. I, I did the P too big in Pat Phoenix. Alright. Alright, the ink bleeds through. If I can get a new sheet of paper. Phoenix. That's that's not that great. I can do better than that. I love doing peas. They're like so awesome. They're like huge and swoopy. Um, this is a little cooler. S's are hard to do. Oh, like Pat Pat Phoenix. I think the one on the bottom is better. Pat Phoenix. See, here's, I, if I can do S's like that, I think that's the fucking best looking S in the universe, man. Penis. Alright, I'm done. Got to say penis, doo-wop, had a good day. Do-do-do-wop, bop, 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 da 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 da